Welcome Monday, welcome Kegolazo. It's another Kegolazo with Fabrizio Romano as we discuss Harry Kane and his future after Tottenham's win against Manchester City, Barcelona as well, and the economic and financial implications to go with that as well. Kylian Mbappé, he was booed, my goodness. Fabrizio Romano is going to talk about all of this as well as Serie A coming this weekend and what to expect as well from certain players that you may not have heard of. Monday, Fabrizio Romano, que golazo, begins right now. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Kigo Lasso on this Monday, and Monday only means one thing, Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, how are you, brother? My friend, I'm okay, I'm okay, thank you. Really happy with the big leagues for starting, so we were needing some football, and so really, really happy and looking forward for the final two weeks of transfer market. Fabrizio, you know, I know you say you're excited about the football. Surely you need a rest. No, you don't <laughs> stop. In September, in September, not now. During the window is impossible. For me, summer doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> for me, summer doesn't exist. That should be on a T-shirt, Fabrizio, for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But welcome, everybody, and welcome, Fabrizio uh, Romano, of course. And as we promised on the weekend recap, I wanted to quickly touch on Barcelona. Barcelona, you know, we were worried a little bit about how they were going to start life without Lionel Messi, and we will get to that in a second, but they did do a good victory against Real Sociedad for two. Martin Braithwaite got two goals there. Pique, who has reduced his salary and has also included a goal in his opening weekend as well, and Sergio Roberto uh, making it 4-2 against Real Sociedad. But uh, Fabrizio, the reason why I wanted you to talk about first Barcelona is first... You know, well, first of all, how, how did you see Barcelona against Real Sociedad? It was, at the very least, for Barcelona fans, it was a good thing to see, you know, a good victory. Yes, I think they, they need now to, to, to change. They know that now is a new era, as Laporta said many times, also while he was having his press conference to say, to give the farewell to, to Leo Messi. And now it's a new era. And they had this kind of feeling also on the pitch from the team. They know that, okay, Messi has been part of the legend of football and not only of Barcelona. But now it's time to change, it's time to think about the future. And they have many good things to build on for the future because they have players like Pedri, who is incredible. He's always playing Olympics, Euros, always playing Barcelona, and he's always so good to watch. So they have a lot of young talents. They have the new signings, Memphis and Derek Garcia, going so well at their debut with, with Barcelona. Uh, they have the leaders because, as you mentioned, Gerard Piquet was scoring, but he's a leader on and off the pitch. So they have good things to build on for the for the future of course they miss Leo Messi and they will miss Leo Messi and they at the first match they will not be at, as the expectation are for Barcelona they will talk about Leo Messi for the whole week but I'm sure that they have an interesting team to build something for the future so I had good feelings about the team they need some time they maybe need something also for for a new striker because Kuman said we want a new striker we need a new striker and we will see if they will be able to sign a new one in the next two weeks but I see Barcelona with a good project young talents and I like it, to be honest, and I think they can do interesting things this season. They can do. It's a talented team. But did John Laporta did come out this morning with a massive press conference with a lot of information, 1.35 billion euros in debt, a negative net worth of 451 million euros. This is all according to Laporta, by the way. Barcelona's wage bill is 103% of their total revenue. Uh, the previous spending also had like a South American based scout that was getting paid 8 million euros. Um, and uh, Neymar's 222 million sale, basically that's the catalyst of everything according to Joan Laporta. So Fabrizio, are, you know, we're talking that, you know, they want a strike or whatever, but are we expecting yeah. any exits from Barcelona? Do you think? They need it. They need it. They really need to sell players to get rid of some player. And they're working on Miralem Pjanic in particular because he's not playing and he has a huge salary. So they need to, to sell him or to loan him out, in, him out. They need a solution for Miralem Pjanic. And let's see if it will be Juventus with Aaron Ramsey. If Ramsey will receive some bid, they will bring in Miralem Pjanic or if it will be some Premier League clubs, but they need to sell Miralem Pjanic. Uh, same for Samuel Umtiti. They're looking for a solution. We have a lot of rumors about Benfica, but they are not 
Stolt into Simon Titi. From Barcelona, they hope that something will change in the next two weeks because they need to find a solution for Umtiti and Pjanic in particular. Let's see what happens with Coutinho. Also, if I'm told that at the moment, the situation is still a bit quiet around Coutinho. So a lot of rumours, Similan, Tottenham, but no bids arrive to Barcelona at the moment. Uh, I think if some club want Coutinho, they know that Barcelona are in trouble, so they're waiting for the final, final days of the window to try something for Coutinho and same for, for Pjanic and Umtiti. But they need to sell players, as you say. They are in, in trouble by, by financial point of view, as Laporta say today. And so they need absolutely to, to get rid of some players. And I would mention these three, Pjanic, Umtiti, and maybe, maybe Kutit. Okay. Well, uh, how about, uh, you know, would they consider anything at all for, you mentioned Pedri. The fact that he played and started is kind of amazing, to be honest. Uh, you know, Euros, the Olympics, and then he started the first game for Barcelona. Would they listen to anything with Pedri or even the young? No, no chance, no chance. Also because they are considered players for the future and since the start of the market, they always say that they have players that are untouchable. Okay, we are in trouble, but we want to keep our best players and it means Ter Stegen, it means Frankie de Jong, it means Pedri, it means Sansu Fati. So they want to keep their stars for the present and future and so Pedri is absolutely untouchable. I can tell you that one year ago, when they had the terrible night nightmare against Bayern Munich, the day after the match, Bayern Munich were calling Barcelona to ask about Pedri, to propose around 40 million euros for Pedri. It was one year ago from Bayern Munich, but Barcelona said, no chance, we want to keep the player, and so he will be one for the future and untouchable for Barcelona, and same for Frankie de Jong. The day after. Talk about adding insult yeah. to injury. Eh? Sorry yeah. about that huge <laughs> loss. Well, can you give us Pedri? <laughs> <laughs> the day after, 24 hours later. Unbelievable. Well, uh, definitely something to keep an eye on, of course, Barcelona. Well, from one club that's struggling to another one that's just enjoying life. Uh, we saw PSG beating Strasbourg this weekend, but that really wasn't the highlight. The highlight was the presentation of all their new toys. Of course, Donnarumma, Sergio Ramos, Wijnaldum, and of course, Lionel Messi, Fabrizio Romano. It was incredible. But also, ahead of all of that, Kylian Mbappé was booed, my friend. He did score in that game as well. There's a lot of questions about his future, the last year of his contract. Is there any chance at all he le leaves this year or is it more to do with January and after that? Yes, he was booed, but then when he scored, they were chanting his name. So Shocker, you know how right? football. <laughs> we know football how it is. It's always about this kind of things. Uh, but about his future, the situation is, at the moment from Paris Saint-Germain's side, they're still really relaxed and still really quiet. They're convinced that Bappé will end up staying at Paris Saint-Germain this summer, but they know they have a problem on the contract because at the moment they have no agreement with Kylian Bappé to extend the contract. And so what El Khelaifi was saying is he has to stay because we have the best team in the world now and he asked us to have a top team for the future because during the negotiation it was not just about the salary of Mbappé with Paris Saint-Germain, but he was asking for a top team to win the Champions League and to win everything in the coming years. So that's why... Uh, they are now confident to keep Mbappé this summer and let's see on the contract side. But as of now, they have no agreement on the contract and that's why Real Madrid are ready. Real Madrid are ready in every moment Paris Saint-Germain will change their stance of Kylian Mbappé if they will call them in the next two weeks. Every, also, if it's on deadline day, Real Madrid will be ready with an important, crazy bid, more than 100 million euro for Kylian Mbappé. But it depends on Paris Saint-Germain, not on Real Madrid. So they're waiting on Paris Saint-Germain position. As of now, Al Khelaifi wants to keep the player and he's convinced that Mbappé will end up playing for Paris Saint-Germain. This season, Real Madrid position is so clear. is We are ready. If it's not this summer, we will try next summer with me pay as free agent so at the moment the situation is like a poker game i would say yeah so how can real madrid do this do you think financially because obviously they have some problems as well so i'm imagining they have to also move a lot of pieces from their side yes yes they have to but to be honest we have also to recognize that they signed the last players paying some money uh, it was three years ago with mendy then they spent two windows without signing any player this summer mm. they signed alaba but as a free agent okay you have to pay for salary and commission of course but it was a free agent they lost varan they lost sergio ramos uh, they are maybe going to sell also martin odgar to arsenal is a possibility they are negotiating we will see if we'll go through in the coming days but they are prepared by financial point of view to do something important for Kylian Mbappé. They are not spending money on normal players, I would say, in the last years because they are prepared to do something crazy to bring in another Galactico as Kylian Mbappé. When will be the right moment? We will see if it will be this summer difficult or next summer as free agent. So they're ready. They're ready and they are saving money since windows and windows because they want to, to have Kylian Mbappé.
Interesting indeed, and something once again to watch out for as one of the best players in the world, and his future remains in question. All right, well, let's talk another one. Man City lost one nothing to Tottenham, and it seems that they, one club, might need something else from uh, the other, as Harry Kane obviously didn't take part. What is the latest here, Fabrizio? Because it's just, you know, we, we know Daniel Levy very well, right? At least you do. And in terms from a business perspective, and I know that he's not going to go down without a fight. Uh, Man City ready with that 150 million offer? Yes, they're preparing this bid. Uh, and as you said, <laughs> Daniel Levy is so strong in negotiations. So they know that maybe uh, pushing too much is not the best way with Daniel Levy. They are leaving it in Tottenham hands. So if Tottenham will decide to change their position and put Harry Kane on the market, Manchester City will be 100% ready with this bid. It's 150 million euro. They are also available to talk about potential add-ons to convince Tottenham. But as of now, from Tottenham, they say, we don't want to sell Harry Kane. So it's a so similar situation to Mbappé. Uh, it's another poker game because Tottenham are prepared to keep the player. They want to change his mind. But Manchester City have this bid in place. They are ready. Eh? They are ready with the new bid because the opening one was £100 million. It was in June and Tottenham said, no, we have no intention to accept this bid. Now they are preparing a new bid for €150 million. Euros. So let's see if now Tottenham will change their position. But... It's another one to keep an eye on this week and next week because Manchester City are not giving up on Harry Kane and they still hope they have chances to sign him. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. All right, let's keep going here because uh, Tammy Abraham off to Roma. Uh, an interesting one here because there's a few clauses uh, as part of this contract from Chelsea to Jose Mourinho's Roma and Serie A, which we'll talk about in a second, Fabrizio. Yes. Um, as you mentioned, it's important to mention about Jose Mourinho, you know, because uh, you mentioned him and it's been key for this move because Tammy Abraham at the start of the negotiation, he was tempted by Arsenal. So he was like thinking about this possibility, uh, Arsenal or Roma, but Arsenal were needing to sell one player in this position. Like like I said, before signing Tammy, Tammy Abraham and Roma had been so fast. They had the director Thiago Pinto in London to negotiate with Tammy Abraham. Mourinho was sending him messages every day to convince the player to join Roma. And that's it. Now they have an agreement. Uh, it's a done deal for 40 million euro plus 5 million euro I don't. So everything has been completed between Chelsea and Roma. Medical was okay yesterday in Roma. So everything is completed and soon will be official. But as you say, it will be a buy back close for Chelsea. It will be valid from June 2023. So in two years. And it will be for 80 million euro. So Chelsea will have the chance of re-signing this player in future for 80 million euro. Unbelievable. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break if you're listening on audio, but if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to keep on rolling here with a little break because speaking of Serie A, here it is, everybody. Unbelievable. Paramount Plus is your home for soccer, right? You already have the Champions League. You know, Scotland as well is coming in the house, Brazil and part of South America, but stream every match of Serie A, Italy's top league featuring some of the world's best, including, you know, Juventus, Inter Milan, AC Milan, AS Roma, Napoli, and so many more. Plus some of the world's biggest stars like Cristiano Ronaldo, Slatan Ibrahimovic, Weston McKenney, the beautiful face of Olivier Giroud, and many, many more. With live matches and heart-pounding CBS sports coverage, you don't want to miss. Serie A kicks off opening weekend, August 21 and 22, streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. Fabrizio Romano, how excited are you, my friend? Serie A, CBS Sports, Paramount Plus. Will be, will be fantastic. Will be fantastic because we have now Serie A back at top, top level with a lo lot of young talents with many clubs fighting to, to win the league. This year will be incredible because we have Juventus back with Allegri and their big favourites, but Inter will be there because they lost Lukaku, but they have a good team, a good manager, so they will be prepared to do something important. My personal feeling is that Atalanta will be fighting for the Scudetto because they have an incredible team and the same manager. So they're going to continue their project. And I see Atalanta doing something fantastic this season. AC Milan with Ibrahimovic and Olivier Giroud, they will be in the race. But also Roma with Mourinho, Napoli with Spalletti, Lazio with Sarri. It's incredible. Many clubs involved in the race to, to win the league. It's not just about the Champions League race. It's about to win the league. So it will be really fantastic to watch Serie A on Paramount Plus and on CBS Sports this season. And I'm really, really excited. 
And I root for Gasparini more than anybody. I love that man. I hope that your Atalanta, uh, you know, prediction is close to being correct. Listen, you talked about the big stars. I talked about the big stars, but uh, is there anybody in Serie A, any player at all, perhaps under the radar, that you think we should be paying more attention that maybe could be making some moves, wh whether it's in Serie A itself or maybe from Serie A somewhere else in the future. Obviously, Italy being the champions of Europe as well, a lot of eyes right here. I want to mention some, some names because, first of all, my name is one player I love since the first day I saw him and I'm happy now you can see him with Serie A on Paramount Plus and on, on CBS Sports, that is Dujan Vlaovic, the striker that Atletico Madrid and Tottenham want but trust me, in one or two years, we will talk about top, all top clubs of the world trying for this guy. He's incredible. He's an incredible striker. He's talented. He's 21, but he scored more than 20 goals last season. He's the leader of Fiorentina. Fantastic player. Tottenham and Atletico Madrid want him this season, but Fiorentina at the moment are going to keep the player. They want to fight to keep the player for one more season. But remember this name because Dujan Vlaovic is a fantastic striker. He will become one of the best in the game, I'm sure, in, in some years. Let me mention a, a potential talent also as center back because in Italy we love center backs, you know, with Bonucci, Chiellini. We have these center backs, <laughs> old school from Baresi, Maldini, and, and many others. And I want to mention Matteo Lovato. He's a center back who joined Atalanta this summer from Verona. He was fantastic with Verona last season. He's a young talent, so good, really interesting player in Chiellini style, old style, but really good. He will play for Atalanta. So keep an eye on, on this guy. And then I go with the last one. He's a player you know because he was good at the Euros. Manuel Locatelli, he will be joining Juventus. He's really one step away from joining Juventus. Now they will do the final bid in the coming few days to complete the deal with Sassuolo. And he will be finally in the top club as he deserves. And it will be really interesting to see how this player will develop because he's really one of the most interesting players we have in Serie A. Absolutely fantastic. Some great uh, under the radar, perhaps not so much under the radar if you're in Serie A, you know, players to look out for as well. Any big signings, anything major happening? Ronaldo staying right where he is. Ibrahimovic looking good with AC Milan. Anybody big? We know that obviously Lukaku leaving for Chelsea was a major one. Anything more major coming in Serie A, do you think, from the big boys specifically? Yes, Inter, Inter signed Edin Dzeko from Roma as Lukaku replacement, but they're going to sign another striker. They want to sign two strikers uh, after losing Romelu Lukaku. And so keep an eye on the second because we will be, it will be Duban Zapata from Atalanta or maybe a new option because they're considering many possibilities. And so I think in the next few days we'll have the final answer, but Inter will go with a new striker and so will be one of the most interesting in the coming days. AC Milan are going for Florenzi as right back. Uh, and it could be an interesting deal also with Adli from Bordeaux as midfielder. So AC Milan are going to complete their team in, in, in some days. As I said, Locatelli to Juventus is, will be a done deal really, really soon. And then I expect also something for, for Maurizio Sarri because Lazio needs some signing as attacking players. They want to play with Felipe Anderson back from West Ham. Ciro Immobile, of course, the striker of Lazio, but they want another winger. And if they sell Correa, they can go for another winger. And so I expect something surprising from Lazio and will be exciting also to follow Serie A transfer market in the next two weeks. Absolutely. And every Monday, I'm going to ask the same question over and over again because Serie A is part of Paramount Plus and CBS Sports and Fabrizio Romano is here to break it all down. Fab, you also broke down, uh, you know, before we say goodbye to you, Matt Miazga to Alaves, that's a pretty interesting one from an American perspective as well. Was that an easy one? Yes, yes, yes. It's just a matter of details now. They are working on final details to complete the deal. It's not signed and completed yet, but it's just a matter of days and that Matt Miazga will be joining Alaves on loan from, from Chelsea. Chelsea are going to also work for Kylie Ugbo to Genk and they're working for Michi, Michi Batsuai to, to Bejikta. So they're working on some outgoings, but they're really good at it. Here's one that, and this is the last one. This is, that's really uh, interesting to me. Atletico Mineiro already has Hulk. If everybody remembers Hulk, like, you know, such an yes. imposing <laughs> striker. And now they thought, you know what? We need a little <laughs> bit more power. So they bring Diego Costa, Fabrizio Romano. Incredible, incredible, <laughs> incredible. Yes, yes, yes. I was surprised too because he had many proposals from European football, you know, from Italy, from Turkey, from many countries. But he wanted to come back in Brazil to have this opportunity with, with Atletico Mineiro, with Gallo. And so everything has been completed this weekend. We have the official announcement. Diego Costa will be in Brazil today. So he's now flying to Brazil. 
to complete his move, to sign officially the contract, but everything has been completed on a verbal agreement with, with Diego Costa. Atletico Mineiro announced the deal, and so good luck to Diego Costa because he's been a fantastic striker in Europe for many years. I still remember him at Chelsea with Antonio Conte before they had the fight, but this season was incredible from Diego Costa, and so exciting striker. I love this kind of strikers, you know. Yeah, no, me too. I'm only 32 years old. I mean, who would have thought he yes. probably could have given it one more season at least in Europe, but he wants to go back uh, home at least and, uh, you know, see some of his brethren. And my God, if you're a defender facing Hulk and Diego Costa, I feel really Good bad. Luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Fabrizio Romano, the last question I will ask, I will say goodbye to you. Is there anything this week that you're focusing on laser sharp? Is it Harry Kane, Mbappé? What is it? Yes, I will mention these two, Mbappé and, and Harry Kane in particular. Uh, also, Jules Kounde for Chelsea, if they want to sign a new centre-back, it could be an interesting one. At the moment, it's still a bit quiet, but in the next day, something could happen. And so I will mention these three, and also Arsenal. They need to do something because the opening games against Brentford was not so good, I would say. So they need something on the market, and Martin Odgar could be the solution from Real Madrid. So they are negotiating on this one. And we will see. And Granit Xhaka signed the new contract with Arsenal till 2025. will be official soon. And uh, congrats to, to Granit Xhaka because he was really close to joining Roma. But he changed his mind. He decided to stay at Arsenal. Congrats to Arsenal and Arteta because he was good in convincing the player. And so Xhaka will be staying at Arsenal. Interesting indeed. So close to going to Serie A, but he stays in North London. Fabrizio Romano, you follow him on Twitter. Make sure that you read his content on CBS Sports, also on Instagram. Always a pleasure, my friend. We will see you next week, but I know that we will probably see more of you as the weeks go along. Fabrizio, make sure that you get your breakfast, your lunch, eat, sleep well. <laughs> Take care of yourself, my friend. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Always with pleasure. And see you soon on CBS Sports, on Kegolasso, on Paramount Plus, wherever you want together. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining Kego Lasso. Make sure that you follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, CBS Sports, and your CBS Sports. We will see you next time.